Hello there, I'm Dalai Felinto. Try to speak I'm trying to speak loud because very noisy today. Because today is June twelfth and the whole city is crazy about the World Cup here in Rio, here in Brazil. And this video is to talk to talk about this upcoming feature and the Blender Blender 2.7 that's called Cage Baking. Exactly part of the Cycles Baking. You can see my other Cycles video in my video channel. But this is a very specific specific feature that game artists have been asking for quite a long time. That can be used in pretty much models that uh, for any engine, including the Blender game engine. That's why I'm still showcasing my book here with Mike, it's still up to date, should definitely check it out. But let's go to what matters. Let's make it okay. So basically here I have a file by Oliver Menzel Harloff. It's probably not how his name it sounds, sorry about that. Basically we have a... Um, let's see one more at a time. We have a high poly object which is, the, which is carefully modeled of an hydrant it, which has a subsurf modifier on it so you can see here without the modifier with the modifier and we also have a low poly version of this uh, of this mesh which is basically a base mesh when it comes for baking and the whole idea is to produce an image that uh, pretty much map the difference between both meshes so we can use the low poly mesh with the image to fake the high poly mesh and, and have it loading uh, lightly in your game engine. Uh, we also have a third thing which is also hidden here which is called the cage. So basically how does baking work or especially here for cycles. Let's switch for cycles. Uh, we have the high poly mesh or better, we have the low poly mesh and we have the high poly mesh and what, it, what we try to do is to cast rays from the low poly mesh inwards towards the high poly mesh and the rays, they need to always, always uh, hit the target always hit the high poly mesh, otherwise things go a bit crazy so most of the time we need the, the low poly mesh to be larger uh, than the high poly mesh but sometimes that's not possible so we need to uh, be able to cast the rays from uh, an outer position or to cast a ray from another object uh, the cage here represents this object so if you see only the low poly and the high poly you're going to take the high poly the sorry the cage I'm going to take the cage and actually show only the wires and the bounds okay so so here you can see uh, the low poly mesh is here underneath and we have the kid also going to use x-ray that's going to be no, no need for x-ray I'll go to the kid again okay. so basically we have a pretty much one to one copy of the low poly mesh but it's an inflated ballon out copy of it one thing that's important to notice is that the number of faces cannot be different, cannot change from the low poly mesh to the, uh, to the cage mesh that's imperative because what the software tries to do is to take the same position, the same relative position on the face for, of the cage, for instance like here oh, uh, Grace Spence is not working, uh, that's fine anyway, take the same posi relative position from one of the faces on the cage to the same face on the on the base mesh and then use this as a direction for the ray and then in between, between the cage and the low poly or not between, so not between the cage and the low poly but in the direction uh, from the cage inwards towards the low poly we should have the high poly mesh that's pretty much how it does so let's first show how to bake using the cage in this case you take the high poly you select the low pole, I'm using the outliner here it's very useful for this to organize uh, complex scenes go to the render panel, I'm here on the cycles render uh, panel and go to the big panel, here's where it's set to normal could be combined, could be any of the other modes uh, we set tangent space, is also the default and here's the, the trick part, it selects uh, selected to active 
If you don't have this, you're simply going to bake all the selected objects individually, which is not so nice for, you don't do for normal tangent, but can do for combine or ambient occlusion. But for normal, can most of the time you want to bake from selected to active. And then you have two options here, cage and non-cage. I'm going to show the difference later. But for the this example here, we're going to use cage. Uh, just ignore the extrusion because when you have a we're using a cage object, and we're using a cage object, the cage extrusion is not considered. It's pretty much described uh, in the tooltip. It's also explained on the wiki page. So this is the wiki blender, uh, dot six manual blender cycles bake. Here pretty much have everything explained to you. But this video might help as well. So pretty much we have uh, all of them here. You, you pick the cage object. If you take the, um, the low poly object, we actually created a material to it because we need the material because we, we, we bake to the active texture of this object. It's actually the active texture of the respective materials of this object. So we create a dummy uh, material and this material has a image texture node and here we pick the bake test zero one image which is this one over here. So High poly, low poly, don't need to select the cage because the cage is selected here. The cage is not the low poly object we don't need. And just hit bake and wait a few seconds or minutes. It depends on your computer, it depends on your model. And I'm babbling now and there we go. And I also have margin selected so we have some padding going on after the... I just have to hit the zero. You see the difference. So we have some padding going on outside of the UV, lim the UV limits here. So that's the without the padding, this is with padding. Uh, now let's uh, look at the result and compare. So there are two ways of looking at, at the result. One of them, you just take in the, let's hide everyone else. Uh, just take the, the low poly object. No. You can just take the low poly object and then with cycles itself we can set this image to be a normal map. So we go here uh, normal definitely normal map sorry. Normal map. Actually the first thing is to see that the image is properly mapped. I just did that with the texture mode. And since the viewport also uses the image, the active image texture to determine which of the image is the active one, which one, it reaches the, the active image to show on the 3D viewport, by setting up the image for baking, it automatically get the, this preview on the 3D view. Okay? So it's mapped properly. Uh, and now we're going to use this map as color for our normal map. Okay? And then this will be able to preview on the render mode. So this is our low poly mesh with the normal map. Uh, for comparison, we might as well let's move this here and show the, the high poly object. Okay. And they look pretty much alike, I would say. Especially from that distance. Yeah. Um, just for comparison, if you remove the Baking, you can now see that the low poly object is definitely different uh, than the high poly object. And the high poly object has no texture on it. I'm selecting it right now, it doesn't even have material per se. So it really transforming geometry into a tangent uh, map. The other way of testing it is actually, it's actually using the the Blender game can even be the, the Blender render mode, which is actually using um, the GLS uh, display mode. Here you have a very simple material. We've taken this map we just baked using as a normal map, influencing the, the normals. So this way you can actually see here the mapped material in real time without having to rely on the real time baking of uh, cycles. Once again, let's just move it here and compare with the the high poly version of it. 
Uh, on the left we have the high, the low poly with the normal map. On the right we have the high, the regional high poly object. Uh, I'd say it's pretty, it's a pretty good result. Uh, pay special attention here. These areas here are hard to come by. The edges are, are pretty good. Let me turn on the. Oops. Where is my degree pencil? Draw. Hmm. There's something. Degree pencil should be on. Okay, there we go. So, notice this area here. This part over there. See how they're smooth enough. How they're. In a way, similar to the the final result. The regional <coughs> the regional high poly mesh. Now let's go to a more advanced comparison and that's what I have on this layer here and um, here we have four different versions of the same mesh which one is using a different map on the left here we have the the same high poly and low poly mesh and that's the same for all of them but baked with the blender internal so if you take a look here you see there's a lot of problems uh, in this area on the edge most of the time it's not so bad, it's not a terrible map but it's definitely not usable for production when it comes to the these edges and that's why people praise caging baking so much because it's kind of a must have for this kind of assets uh, here we have the no cage option. So the no cage option uh, is very similar to the Blender channel one. It's here. It's it happens when you bake. Let's go back to the cycles just to show the options here. So it happens when you bake without cage. We can still set a uh, rate distance. In this case, I use I used 0.6 for all of them. But uh, whenever the low poly has a split as in uh, so a splitted edge so if you have an edge split mode fire as we have here and if we have all these we see these light blue lines here they are marked as sharp edges they're going to be split using this mode fire that make that that means we don't really have we, we don't <clears throat> we end up with a not very smooth geometry to, to cast arrays from so whenever we have we come close to the edge and let's see in the preview so we can see the, the glitches let's hope youtube can actually convey that difference yeah i can definitely see here Oops. Uh, i can definitely see here uh, that we have some issues on this area here i think it's a minor issue it's an issue here as well so basically see so the uh, the edges are not so nice because the more moles are not smooth from the transition from the transition to one phase to the other <coughs> on the generated cage it is not a cage on the, on the inflated version we use to cast the rays to the high poly object uh, this is still a useful method to use with uh, plan baking so we have a plan and we want to bake a high poly plan for a wall uh, detail or, or whatever and we don't want to add extra loops uh, near the edges, so we can simply use an O-cage baking option. It also gives you something that's closer to the legacy blender baking method. So some people that are used to the workflow might just keep using it. Now for the cage results. Uh, on the right here, uh, we have the object cage uh, baking. It's the one we I just showed how to bake. On the left is the extrusion-based cage. So if you go here once again to the Cycles UI, here we have the cage option, we can pick the extrusion or the cage object. It doesn't make if you pick the object, the extrusion is ignored. So this one is was generated with the extrusion, which simply uh, creates a copy of the base mesh of the active object and make an inflated version of it using that distance, uh, ignoring all the edge plate modifiers. So it gives gives you very smooth uh, edges. So here's where compare with the other one, they have a some better result here on this edge compared to that. Oh, 
just for the records I'm using the shift F navigation which is pretty cool I coded it's cool uh, here you can see that's definitely superior okay uh, there's some issues though in this case you can see here on, on this area compared to the the object based caging cage which is very wavy and uh, the real fix for this instead of using a cage object is to add more geometry so here you need to add more loops somewhere like here uh, yeah well the, the whole thing is split but anyways you need to add a, another loop closer to the to the edge or vertical here honestly I don't even know I don't do baking for a living but some people do and that's what <clears throat> and that's what they do or if you don't want to add extra geometry you can simply have uh, the cage uh, object and that's what we have here so most of the time actually you're going to be using the extrusion cage because it's non-destructive so if you later on you change your, lo your low poly object you need to recreate a cage from scratch but in some cases you might as well after you have your model finished just create a cage object and give you the full control of the big of big geometry just for comparison here is the high poly and of course there are some differences but here hard to notice notice I'm even gonna play this on the blending game engine and you can see that uh, I know it looks pretty cool to me Oh, okay. It's I think the blending medium has a bug, by the way. The way the the normals are applied here. But anyway, that doesn't matter. That's uh, that's pretty much about it. Uh, just for the records, let me show the the different maps. Let me split this in four. And this is. Uh, why is not editing? Oof, come on. Ah, my computer is getting slow because of the recording. It's okay. So, just compare this is the Blender Eternal image. This is the cage, cage object image. Even though it's going to be. Even though this is not, this is a bit small to see the details, but you can see that they are different. Di different. That's internal. That's the the big object. I'm going to show now the cage extrusion. You see that's also different. Uh, different, especially in this part here where I have the mouse on, and this part here as well. And you can also see the no cage solution which is different in many other parts so that's pretty much it pretty much it. Uh, this uh, this file from Oliver Menzo Horvath it's on the SVN on Blender SVN so if you need a test file you can actually download it from in the, in the SVN lib SVN in Blender lib tests cycles big normal uh, this is the wiki don't for, don't forget to check it check it out and also, if you want some more details on cages, you can get to the, you can go to the PolyCount website, and it pretty much explain how the industry de facto cage is supposed to be supported. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna have all the links on the video. Uh, that's about it. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you use the Blender 2.71 a lot, and I hope you root for Brazil for the World Cup. So, take care and goodbye.